Hi everybody, and today we're going to do an introduction to rational functions. Because this is just an introduction, this means I'm going to have multiple videos about rational functions. This one we'll talk about the definition, we'll do some asymptotes, and do the domain and some zeros, and then later we'll get into the graphs. So we'll start with the definition. A rational function can be written in the form r of x is p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are both polynomial functions and q of x is not zero. So we really want to start with the domain. The domain of r of x is the set of all x for which q of x is not equal to zero. So back to that, don't divide by zero at any time. I'll start with find the domain of f of x is two over x. So I'm looking at the denominator and I think x cannot be equal to zero. So kind of depending on your homework system, you might be able to put in what value is restricted. You might also have to say as an interval, so as an interval, this would be negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. So I always like to show you both ways. Same thing with g of x. I have x plus five over x minus two. So I look at that bottom, x minus two, and I say that can't be zero, which means x can't be two. If you need a little help with interval notation, draw a quick little number line, put the number two on it. I think I have all these numbers to the left. This is negative infinity until two. Then I go from two to infinity. So that way I can see the intervals and having that little point in the middle really helps. So my answer for the domain would be negative infinity to two, union two to infinity. Notice everything here is open. I'm not including the two. I'm not including either kind of infinity. Make that a little bigger, I have c, f of x is x minus seven over x squared plus three x minus 70. So I need to go ahead and factor the denominator. So I have factors of negative 70 that give me three, so that will be seven and 10. That will be plus 10 and minus seven. Now I am not going to look at the numerator at all. I see there's an x minus seven up there, but don't touch it. What you want to say here is that x plus 10 cannot be zero, x minus seven cannot be zero. So x cannot be negative 10, x cannot be seven. I don't want you to cancel this out because that would allow you to use seven in this function and you can't, so stop yourself from canceling at this point. Looking at the domain, I have negative 10, I have seven. So I would say negative infinity to negative 10, then negative 10 to seven, then seven to infinity. So I have one more piece than the number of zeros I have in the denominator. So two numbers, three intervals. This next one, g of x is x squared minus nine over x squared plus one. If you try x squared plus one equals zero, you get x squared equals negative one. If you take the square root, you should make yourself stop. If I take the square root of negative one, it's not a real number. So what does that say? It says we don't have any exclusions. X can be everything. So my domain is negative infinity to infinity. What I like to think about is if I take a number X and I square it, now it's gonna be greater than or equal to zero. When I add one to it, now it's gonna be greater than or equal to one. So greater than or equal to one, always positive, never gonna be zero, it means I can put anything into that function. All right, so now that we have a little idea about the domain, let's look at values of f of x when x is close to a number we're excluding. So I'm gonna start with this one, three over x minus two, and I'm gonna say, well, what happens if I pick a number really close to two? The easiest way to show you that is I'm gonna go over to Desmos. So in Desmos, I put this function, f of x is three over x minus two, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the settings, say change that to a table, that way I can put in some numbers. So watch, if I try putting in two, it says undefined, but what's a number close to two? Maybe 2.1 or 2.01 or 2.001, so, Hopefully you're noticing that the closer I get to two, the bigger and bigger my values of f of x are. So let's do one more, 2.00001. So get really close to two, I get really, really big value of f of x. So hopefully you're seeing it's going to infinity. Now let's pick a number close to two, but less than two. So maybe like 1.9 or 1.99 
let's try 1.99999. And I want you to see I have a similar thing going on, that I'm getting these bigger values, negative this time, but I do see this increase. If I go over here and I actually look at the graph, I can think about, as I get close to two, and I'll help you see that, I will draw a line x equals two. So as I'm coming closer to two, I see I'm going up, 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 up. Or if I go from the other side, as I get close to two, I'm going down, 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 down. So this is gonna be really important to us talking about rational functions in seeing as we get close to these numbers that we're headed to infinity or negative infinity. So we have a name for this. This is called a vertical asymptote. So a vertical asymptote is like that line I drew, and it just kind of gives me this boundary to help me figure out what's happening to the function. So we say a function r of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals a if r of x is going to either positive or negative infinity as x approaches a. Um, sometimes we write this as something called a limit to say as I get close to this number a, then I'm going to positive or negative infinity. Um, sometimes you have to see words like magnitude. I'll try to put everything in there. This limit really comes from calculus, but I like to introduce that early. But what I want to do also is draw in this connection between where the function is equal to zero in the denominator and where the vertical asymptote is located. So here is our definition. A rational function r of x equals p of x over q of x in lowest terms has a vertical asymptote where q of x equals zero. In lowest terms means if I could factor something out and do some reduction, I need to do that before I go to find these vertical asymptotes. And again, I'll show you some examples. So let's start here, nice and easy. I have find the vertical asymptotes, f of x is eight over x minus four. This should feel like the same steps we are doing to find places in the domain. The big difference is the difference between saying equals or not equals to. So with vertical asymptotes, you want to say equals. So we use VA as a shortcut for vertical asymptote. I take x minus four, I set it equal to zero, which gives me x equals four. Super important that you use the right notation here. You want the answer to be a line. So you never want to say the vertical asymptote is four because that doesn't tell you it's vertical. I need that x equals four for me to think of a vertical line. Make it a little bigger. I have f of x is three x plus nine over x minus one times x plus seven. This time I'm gonna get two vertical asymptotes. I'm gonna say x minus one equals zero. That gives me x equals one. Then I say x plus seven equals zero. That gives me x equals negative seven. So I am allowed to have as many vertical asymptotes as is necessary. So there's no limit to how many I can have. The next one, I have find the vertical asymptote, f of x is x plus one over x squared minus one. So this one isn't factored, so let's do the factoring. I have x plus one over x plus one, x minus one. Now this is where it comes in that I have to reduce it. So what's gonna happen? I'm going to cancel out the x plus one. That says I have f of x is equal to one over x minus one. But I'm gonna do this thing over here. I'm gonna say we aren't gonna use the value of negative one. So when you cancel something out, like this x plus one, I want to keep in mind that I want to have the same domain that I started with. So canceling out the x plus one, remind yourself that you can't use negative one. It's not all of a sudden allowed now that I canceled it. So now when I look at the one over x minus one, I have a vertical asymptote where x minus one is zero, which is x equals one. So really careful here. Canceling things out means this x plus negative one is not a vertical asymptote but it is still not in the domain, so I want you to be careful, that is tricky. So now that we kind of got a feel for vertical asymptotes, let's look at something else. Um, we're gonna take this function, f of x is four x plus one over two x plus eight, and think about what happens when f of x gets big. So how we're gonna say this is let's look at values of f of x when x increases in magnitude. And that really means what happens when x gets really big. So I'm gonna do probably what you expect me to do, go into Desmos, and again, I put in this function and I'm gonna go to the settings and say, let's make a table. Because I want to think about, let's put in a big number. And at first, maybe a big number feels like 10. And it says if you put in 10, you get like 1.46. So let's go bigger, let's say 100. 
Now it's 1.9. Let's go bigger. Let's say 1,000. Now it says 1.99. Let's go 10,000. And do you see the bigger and bigger number I put in? And let's just do like 500,000. Hopefully you see I'm getting closer and closer to the number 2. So it's not like it's going to 5 or 10 or 100 or it's not headed toward infinity. It's headed to this very specific value of 2. If I put in maybe negative big numbers, so maybe negative 100, let's put in negative 1,000 or negative 10,000. And do you see I have that same value that I'm again really close to this number 2. Now the two isn't a coincidence. It's really as simple as four divided by two is two. So I can see in the long run, I'm going toward this value of two. Let's actually even write it in there, y equals two. And you can see, let's move this out of the way, that both sides of the graph are headed toward this line that I put in. So I can see all the way to the right, all the way to the left, it seems to curve over to this value of two. So what we call this is a horizontal asymptote. So a rational function r of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals b if r of x is headed to b when x is going to either positive or negative infinity. So this is really a long run kind of behavior that's gonna happen. We have some rules for it, and at first it seems hard, but it's really just three simple rules. So you take whatever the rational function was, and I'm writing it this time as our like polynomial over polynomial. The a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 continue down to a1 x1 plus a0 over b to the m x to the m plus b to the m minus 1 x to the m minus 1 again continue down to b1 x plus b0 just says we have some powers of x on the top we have some powers of x on the bottom they don't have to be the same the coefficients a and b don't have to be the same it's just saying we have these two polynomials put together as a rational. So the first rule says r of x is going to have a horizontal asymptote at a sub n over b sub m if n equals m. Basically, when the powers are equal, you're just going to divide leading coefficients. When I say equal powers, I'm only looking at the leading coefficient. I don't care about all the other terms. I'm just looking at the highest power in the numerator, highest power in the denominator. R of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero if n is less than m. So when the power on the bottom is bigger, which I just say bigger on bottom, there is an asymptote at y equals zero. If it's bigger on top, there's not going to be an asymptote. So no horizontal asymptote if n is greater than m. So let's say bigger on top, no ha. So it seems like a lot, but it really isn't. It's three things. Let's do some examples. You'll see it's pretty short. So the first one says 6x squared plus 8x minus 5 over 7x cubed minus 3x plus 15. The top has a power 2. The bottom has a power 3. Notice I'm looking at powers, not coefficients. The bottom is bigger, means the horizontal asymptote is 0. Like I said with vertical asymptotes, I'm going to say the same thing with horizontal asymptotes. You have to write it as an equation of a line, so you can't just write 0. You have to write y equals 0. Here I have f of x is x plus 8 over x minus 2. Now this time they are both power 1, so power 1, power 1. They both have a coefficient of 1, so my asymptote is 1. The next one, I have 3x squared minus 3 over 2x plus 9. This power 2 is bigger than this power 1. So top is bigger, no horizontal asymptote. So changing the wording, still kind of doing the same thing. It says determine the value of the function as the magnitude of f increases. So this is really looking at the long-term behavior, which is like looking at a horizontal asymptote. So I'm starting with 3x plus 4 over x plus 2. The powers are the same, so that means it's going to be 3 overall. So it's looking for what's going to be the value. So that since this says value, I don't write y equals, I just write 3. The next one says 5 minus 2 over x. This one think in two parts. Well, one part is 5, and 5 never changes. So 5 is going to be the same no matter what happens. But the 2 over x... As x gets bigger, 2 over x, this is going to go to 0, right? Bigger on the bottom, it goes to 0. So 5 minus 0 leaves me at 5. The last one says 6x plus 2 over 3x squared plus 5. Powers say 1 on the top, 2 on the bottom, 2 is bigger, so overall this is going to 0. 
So be careful with that magnitude word. It's really looking at the same rules that you're looking at for the horizontal asymptotes. It's just you answer with a numeric value versus a line. Let's put those three things together. We'll find the domain, the vertical, and the horizontal asymptotes. The first one says x squared over x plus 8. So for the domain, x cannot be negative 8. This immediately says I have a vertical asymptote when x is negative 8. And then for the horizontal asymptote, 2 is bigger than 1, so I have none. The next one, x plus 6 over 4 minus x. So I'm going to start with my domain. If I think 4 minus x cannot be 0, then x cannot be 4. That says I have a vertical asymptote where x equals 4. They are very close to being the same thing. Just watch the not equals 2 versus the equals 2. For my horizontal asymptote, I have a negative x in the bottom and x on top. That's 1 over negative 1. That gives me negative 1. Now I have x squared minus 4 over x squared plus 8x minus 20. So start by factoring x plus 2, x minus 2. Then I factor negative 20 that gives me 8. That's going to be positive 10, negative 2. So stop right there. Before you go any further, and before you cancel out, let's do domain. The domain says x cannot be 2, x cannot be negative 10. So I got rid of those two parts. Now I can cancel out the 2. And I have f of x is x plus 2 over x plus 10. I'm writing myself a note that x can't be 2. So I don't like to throw anything away. Now I say the vertical asymptote is where x equals negative 10. We'll come back to this in the future, but what we call this is a hole. So if I can cancel something out top and bottom, it means I have just this little hole in my graph. So it's important later that we come back and talk about holes for rational functions. Then the last piece says find the horizontal asymptote. Well, I have an x over an x. 1 over 1 is 1. Bigger, I have 3x squared plus 7x plus 8 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. So the top one, 3x squared plus 7x plus 8, you can try like the AC method and look at 3 times 8 is 24 and try to do factors of 24, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, um, and you've run out there. That's, that's all you can do. And none of them come up to 7. So I know I can't factor the top, so I leave it alone. 3x squared, 7x, and 8. I can factor the denominator. It's x plus 1, x plus 2. So what do I think here? Well, I think about the domain x can't be negative 1, it can't be negative 2, which says I have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and at x equals negative 2. What do I know about a horizontal asymptote? Well, it says look at the powers. So I have 3x squared over x squared, which says y is equal to 3. The last piece I have is to look at zeros of a rational function. So if I have r of x is p of x over q of x, again in reduced terms, then r of x equals 0, wherever p of x is equal to 0. So q of x, which is the bottom, tells me where I have my vertical asymptote. p of x, which is the top, tells me where I have my zeros. So let's start here. I have f of x is x plus 9 over x plus 6. I'm first making sure that it's in reduced form, which it is. Then I just look at x plus 9 equals 0 when x is equal to negative 9. I'm going to write this as an intercept, negative 9, 0, to really reinforce what we're doing here. We're finding a 0 of this function. The next one, I have x plus 6, x minus 6 over x plus 9. Nothing cancels, so I say x equals negative 6, x equals positive 6. I'll write that as points again just to show you that we have intercepts. C says h of x is 5 over x plus 4. Well, the numerator is 5. 5 is never equal to 0, so I have no intercepts. Fine. It's fine not to have an x-intercept, so we're going to say no x-intercept here. And then this very last one. I have x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x squared plus 10x plus 16. Let's factor that. I have x plus 3, x plus 2. 
and then I have x plus 8, x plus 2. So before I go to do the zeros, I need to make it in reduced form. I'm going to cancel out the x plus 2. I have an x plus 3 left. So x plus 3 equals 0 says x is negative 3. I have negative 3, 0. So that's our introduction. It was a lot, but it will set us up for the next part, which will be graphing. So I'll do a separate video on that. I thought better to do in small pieces than everything at once. Good luck.